Good afternoon, everyone. Hope all is well. So today we are going to be going live with a professional footballer who plays for Middlesbrough, who also plays for a national team, uh, Benin national team. And we're super excited to have him on board. This is my first live where I'm going to be live with a footballer and I'm super excited. So uh, let's get Rudy Justeed on uh, this live. There we go. Send it over. Hopefully this is the first one and I'll have more footballers uh, seeing this and who knows, who knows. Uh, maybe we have other sports uh, athletes and professional sports athletes who come on, uh, jump on this live with me, you know, just to talk about what they do, how their profession is um, and all that kind of stuff. So... Uh, let me just see where hey sue hope all's well i haven't seen you for a long time on my live hope you're doing good um just a few moments and we should be live with uh Rudy. <clears throat> Oh, I am so sorry to hear that, Sue. Uh, my condolences to you and your family. I hope, um, you know, I'm sure she's resting in peace. So, uh, yeah, I hope God gives you the power and strength to uh, deal with it. Here we go. We've got Rudy on here. So, oops. Rudy, you need to uh, join into this live with your phone and not a laptop because it won't work through a uh, PC. It only works via your phone. Sorry guys, apologies for the wait. We're just having some technical issues which should be sorted in a moment. But I'm super excited, wow. Landed myself the first footballer. <laughs> I remember when, Mid when I came to the UK uh, in 2004 and Middlesbrough used to be up in the Premiership. Uh, competing with teams like, you know, I, I remember when they used to be neck and neck with Newcastle at some point. Oh, well. Times have changed. Many teams have gone off the Premiership. Many teams have come into the Premiership. But football's football, still entertainment. And this is what we are going to be talking about today. Um... Anyone who's got any questions about football, training in football, do put your questions in here, you know. It's, uh, it's good to um, get your questions answered when you're at it. Uh, Zahab, Jorbai, I uh, won't be able to get you on the live right now because we've got a footballer coming on. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, next time, just drop me a DM. Uh, if you want to come on my live and it's all about empowering people with knowledge, sharing positivity, 
that's the live sessions that I do uh, them for. So drop me a DM and I'll definitely get you on uh, this um, live. Let's see where Rudy is. Sorry about this people. I know everyone's waiting for Rudy to come on, but uh, just bear with me and he should be here. We're just speaking on the messaging, so he should be here pretty quick. Okay, great, super. So we've got Rudy here. Um, I don't think I can see you. Here we go. So we've got Rudy on here. Hi. Here, here we are. How are you? Very good. And you? Sorry good, for the good. delay. No, no, not at all. Thank you so much for coming on this live, uh, no for problem. accepting. Uh, I know you're a busy man, you know, playing football. Uh, I don't know how it is right now with lockdown and everything. But thank you so much for coming on this live, joining me in terms of sharing the knowledge, spreading the positivity in your career, in your professional career, what you do. So thank you so much for coming on this live today to join me in that mission. My pleasure, my friend. Super. Rudy, before we move forward, if you can introduce yourself as, I mean, everyone knows you who's live here and I've introduced you quite a few times, but if you can introduce yourself as to who you are and what exactly is it that you do so that we can get the conversation moving forward. So I'm Rudy Gested, um, born in France, um, raised by two amazing parents. I've got a, a sister and a brother. Uh, I'm now a dad of uh, three kids and, uh, wow. Congratulations. and a happy, happy husband, so a lovely wife. Okay. Uh, I play football um, since I'm uh, 12 years old, but I'm professional since I'm 18 years old. Wow. Um, currently, uh, I just found a new challenge, so it's a good news. It's not official yet, so I cannot tell the club, but uh, it's, it's going to be done. Okay. And uh, on the side, I created my charity, my foundation, named Jarama, who is going to help uh, the orphans in uh, Benin, West Africa. So the few projects going on, so it's an exciting time. That is absolutely amazing. I mean, firstly, what you're doing for your country, your club, your profession, and now this charity as well. It's absolutely amazing to have people like yourself with, you know, who think about other people in terms of helping them out to possibly have a better life, a better professional career, 
you know, whatever they're doing it in. So let's move the conversation forward. Today, it's about you. And uh, this is why we have you here in terms of you sharing your knowledge on how you go about uh, playing football and doing other things that you do. So, Rudy, before I move forward, you know, I ask this to all my guests that come on here. You, you just mentioned that you've been playing football since the age of 12. Take you back before 12. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you were a young kid growing up, and we, we, we're all, when we're, we're, we are all growing up as kids and teenagers, we see a lot of careers in front of us that aspire us to get into that career, whether it's a footballer, whether it's a doctor, lawyer, an architect, an engineer, mm -hmm. a property agent like myself, whatever it is. What were you interested in when you were growing up before the age of 12? What did you, was it football all over your mind or was it, no, I want to become something else in life? No, so when I was young, uh, so before 12, uh, I used to watch my dad, you know, uh, he was a worker, you know, working hard, but he liked sports also on the side. So he was doing some sports, he did some uh, French boxing, um, lifting weight and stuff like this. So I always liked sports. So I tried a few different kinds of sports. I tried the judo. Uh, I, was a, I was quite good uh, at it. Uh, now, since then I didn't... Uh, did, you, did, you get to, did you get to the black belt? No, no, no. I stopped before I was young. So I did, like, <laughs> uh, I think, one or two seasons, but I was... Uh, doing competition with uh, people older than me because I okay. was doing well. Okay. Um, then I went, then I did the uh, gymnastic because I used to like uh, everything about the uh, ninja or stuff like this. So I went oh, okay. to uh, flip flower. Yeah, yeah. Were you, were you, were you, were you inspired by Bruce Lee at that time? Uh, no, no, he's not my generation, but I like everything about martial arts team now. Okay. So, Gotcha. Uh, so I practice uh, then uh, American football because my dad was practicing American football, uh, and then my friend was playing football outside my family. So I start to play a bit, you know, on the side also, but just not in the club. And I start really to 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 play like proper football in the club by training once a week properly when I was ten years old. Okay. And then I joined the the the, the academy in Metz when I was twelve years old. So. Basically, from a very young age, you were completely sports driven, whether it was gymnastics, whether it was judo, whether it was American football, football, you were you had that mindset that I want to become an athlete of within the no, sports industry. I, at this age, I didn't have any like uh, vision about myself in the future. I just liked foot, uh, playing sport or doing sport, any kind of sport. So I was trying a bit of everything to 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 see what I was good at and what I what I enjoyed to do. Uh, and I was quite um, lucky because my parents always pushed me to try and everything, uh, try sports, try everything. You know, just don't stick with one thing if you, the world is big, so you've got a lot to do. Um, so, yeah, just like sports. And then when I, when I realized that I was good at football around 12, 10 years old and the like, professional team was coming, tried to get me, I said, yeah, why not giving a shot, you know? I like to play. I, I like the competition. I like to win in games and score goals. So, did you get scouted or did you join an academy? No, I get scouted when I was eleven or even to ten. I started at ten. Then I went after six months. Uh, the, the the team next to me just scouted me. So I went on like a big trial with different kind of players from different kind of club, and um, <clears throat> and I did well. So then they they scout me again. But in the same time, there's another club from France who scouted me. And I went there. I flew there to visit the, uh, the facilities with my family and everything. So they offered me a contract. And when I came back, the club next to me, which is Metz, uh, realized that I could leave, I could leave, the, I could leave the, the area. So they offered me a better contract. And then I stayed there. It was much easier for me to be with the family around. Close and, to home and close to family. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And and the, the 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 school school part was important for my. Parents. This is where uh, this is my this is exactly my question right now. That you know when because you get into that professional playing life, hmm. how do you deal with schooling, college? You know, a lot of a lot of uh, young kids these days they aspire to become footballers because mm. obviously they see the future of a footballer right it's the wealth it's the health everything yeah, yeah. that comes with it but obviously academic study is also needed especially mm. when you want to carry on uh, into life and bring that academic 
uh, sort of study back because obviously as a footballer your age in playing football is what maybe 35 maximum 38 mm. you can go up to but then what after that because if you mm. don't have that academic thought process then how do you carry on but we'll come back to that but how was it for you to deal with both the situations at the same okay. time so the club I joined mess uh which was very good it's they you 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 go to the school from 8 to 3 o'clock every day monday to okay. friday okay and then you train at 3:30 okay after training you go to uh, after school okay homework doing your homework yep, from yep, uh, yep, yep. from uh, 6 to 8 okay and at 8 o'clock then you've got a uh, one hour free time and then you go back you go bed so it was like big days for young kids wow but at least we had like a, a proper like school uh, proper education from uh, 12 to 17 years old until you've got your your A I don't know how you call it call A it levels A levels yeah, GCSEs A-levels. absolutely yes. did you find it tough to handle both at the same time yeah i think it's it's quite difficult at, at the young age because i mean you have, did that constantly for 5 years so yeah. you know you, you do it from 12 to 17 and uh, you've got the game on saturday you don't have any summer Three holidays days. Exactly. No free days, no summer holidays. So at one point when you're like 14 years old, 15 years old, like girls are coming around and you try to be with friends and you know you've got different kind of thoughts coming in your in your mind. It's where most of the time the 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 selection, natural selection is made because that's where you have to be strong in your mind and knowing exactly what you want to do because it's so easy like to be a to get driven shot. away. Absolutely struck by something that, else. That that little bit of fame will just drive you away into something else and you won't be exactly. able to Exactly. And do you think that's the reason most of the players get dropped in the team or because their mindset is not strong maybe they're not focusing on their game maybe they're not focusing on the team the club mm-hmm. and possibly they're focusing more on their per- personal life and and you know I think it's at the young age you do, the money is not too much involved when I, now it's it's getting more and more because you've got more money when you're young at my my generation we didn't have too much money at this age uh, only a few people get, got money at this age but it's more about the friends you've got around and uh, fooling around with friends you know going outside and uh, you be, you start to get tired for training and so your performance are drop goes down, down. Yeah. yeah exactly so it's like it's not about just the money and the lifestyle it's more about like every distraction you've got around you and the so the commitment around. to come to your yeah yeah yes and the and problem when you do lives on the phone you know the phone yeah, comes yeah. through and then you're like yeah apologies and at the same that. time it's hard to be committed because you we all know that from 12 to people are going to sign pro maybe we've got one player two players so like the the selection is very difficult very, very tough. tough so it's so at at 14 15 you you know some people they won't get they won't get through so they okay. start to be fooling around a bit so you you have to stay away from those kind of people you know so that's and what's, you... what's 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 your sort of um ingredient to stay committed um The what been, was your mindset? I mean, yeah, well, I, I, my my dad was one an example for me. And uh, when he when he's got plan in his head, he's he's on it. You know, you cannot like try to distract him. So I try to to follow his uh, his mindset. And um, I I nearly stopped stopped football when I was 14 years old. No I way. Like, yeah, I was struggling with injury. Okay. Um, and I I like martial arts. I said, and I wanted to yeah. do Thai boxing. Yep, yep. So then I realized now I stick with it. I've got I like it more than Thai boxing, so it was like You saw big... your you saw your potential being built. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, when you tr- when you start to like to uh, really put things in perspective and try to uh, have your, uh, a clear vision of what you want to do and where you're going to you want to go. So the football was my vision now. So I would say that from 15 14 15 years old like, my commitment like put a, a step further. So Absolutely. now I was really focused, you know. And I gave everything I had to make sure I can uh, I can get there. So and then at, being... at the age of 17 then you sort of finished school and then you yes. had that full time sort of yes. giving it to the game mm-hmm. and you didn't have any sort of distraction obviously family friends of yes, course yes, you have to have yes. that because that's what builds 
up mm-hmm. that momentum yeah, in you. If you yeah. don't have anyone and you're lonely, it sort mm. of doesn't work out. Um, so how did you come about professional footballing? I mean, obviously you were playing for the club. You, you'd been mm-hmm. scouted at a young age. But then coming to the age of 18, when sort of, I think the age of 18 to, would you agree till the age of 27 is the, you, as, as a footballer, you get those 10 years, which are prime mm-hmm. 10 years for you. So yeah. how did you start building your career from that younger prime age to then move forward? I mean, you're still a young uh, no, guy. Yeah. And you're young still man. But in football, in young man, but in football, I start to be like in the, the last few years, you know, in football. <laughs> but I'm cool with that. You know, I don't have, I'm cool with that. Uh, so, uh, the, the time frame is a bit different when I started football than now. Okay. Because when I started, 18, 19 years old, you have only a few players starting at this age. It was more 20, 21. The, the manager at this time preferred to play like experienced player than young players because the money was different. So your value on the market was different. You know, now an 18 years old player, even if he's got less abilities than the 30 years old players, but because he's 18 and he starts to play with the first team, his value just go up and crazy exactly. money. Exactly, and that's away. that's that's what we see these days. I mean, yeah. So that's why know, the game changed a bit. World record signings know. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo, if, if, all these guys. You know, they, they are like. Yeah, but th- those guys are top guys. But I'm of talking course. about like average players. But just because they're young, they were they the, the value is high. But at my at my my age, it was different. You have to prove yourself first, and then your of value course. go up. Of course. So I started at um, my first game was 19. I, st- I was training with the first team at 18, but I got injured. I pulled my hamstring. I was coming back from the national team, France national team. We did a European tournament. Then I pulled my hamstring, so I was out. So I started in November instead, starting at 18 in September. Okay. Okay. So I started in November with the first team. Played 12 games the first season. We got... Then the season after I start, but I broke my back. So I was out for 15 months. Wow. Yeah, crazy. Wow. So I'm, I'm and then obvi- and, and 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 when a when a player gets injured of that sort, I mean, 15 months is a long period of time. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you're costing the club, you're you know mm-hmm. everything. Do they sort of nurture you in that way that they still want you and they 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 pay for your, um, uh, you know your your medical everything mm-hmm. like that? Is that all covered within the contracts that you have with the club? So I had the five years contract. So, yeah, you're covered by your contract. Uh, in France, but uh, diff- uh, the, if you do it in England, the, 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 the club pay for everything. Of in course. France, you've got four weeks where you've got your full, or six weeks, you've got a full salary. Then you've got an insurance to get the, the extra salary after four, four weeks. I think the club pay like 70% or 50%. I don't remember. What's but right. either way, you're covered in full. Like yeah, you're covered. With the insurance yeah, you're co- and the club. Yeah, you're covered. Okay. But the part was frustrating is, I didn't, when I got injured, I didn't know it was for 15 months. Mm. So after every four, four, five weeks, I tried to come back and it was injured again and come back and injured again. Then I wore like a big hard stuff for, for two months. So I could, I while, to while, 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 pl- while playing the game? Or no, I couldn't just... play. I was okay. out. Yeah. Okay. So I was with this like 24 seven for two months. Uh, just take it off for the shower and then I have to put it back. It was crazy. Yeah, bad time. But I had no choice that just to carry on and be committed to my it's, vision. It's, it's, you know? it's your career. It's your yeah. You've yeah, given yeah. it by this time. You've already given it a decade. You know? Yeah, because exactly. You started at ten, and and you're nineteen, uh, twenty. You're you've already given that time to. So it would it would not seem right for you to exactly just let it go. And at this time, I was like, uh, I was one of the few of my generation in France. 19, born in 1988 to start with the first team. So I couldn't stop now, you know. Of course. Uh, so I just came back after 15, 15 months. They sent me on loan to a, a, like a League One club. Okay. And when I was there, after a month, I started to come back. I had the chance to find a good doctor and a good physio. Because in, in Metz, where, I, am, where I, was, I was struggling to come back, you know. Okay. Then I did the full season over there, came back with the first team. Um, then um, I started to play then in December no, yeah. then I did my groin then I came back and in January I did my knee 
It was the meniscus. Wow. But this time it was my last year contract. At the, the League One club? No, no. I, I did the full season in the League One club. Okay, then I come yeah, back. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you were on loan, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. yeah. I come back to Mess on my last yep. year contract. Yep, yep. And after six months, I do my meniscus. No, usually meniscus is, low, is around like months and a half. But I had like a bad medical staff around and it was, I was out for six months. Then the club said, listen, we give you an amateur contract if you want, but uh, just at this time, year. At this time, did, did it hit your head that am I in the right career right now? What's going on? No, 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 because my goal was clear. So I knew uh, it it was it was not the path I was expecting, but my goal was clear, so I stick with it. You know, then it's gonna be challenging. I knew it, not that challenging at this age, but I know it's gonna be difficult. So then I was unemployed, no club for a month. Then my agent find a, a trial in Cardiff. Okay, Cardiff so City. To, Cardiff City. Yeah. Okay. So I went to Cardiff without training a day for okay. six months. So I didn't know how it was going to happen because my knee was a bit sore. Then I get there, train for two weeks, they sign me, and then I uh, carry on. That's know? it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So how was it How was it coming from France? I mean, uh, and, and also I wanted to ask you this question, that you play for the Benin national team mm. rather than playing for France. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the decision I know is because that's your home country, that's your parents' home country, I guess. No, the decision was simple. I didn't have the level to play for France. Yeah, simple as that. The level seriously? was yeah, seriously. When I when you start to be like twenty four, I was twenty four. I choose to play for. Do you Benin. think it was sheer politics in the game, or 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 why? No, no. It's it? just it's just when I see the level of the national team in France, uh, you have to be realistic. Of course, of course, at one point, you know, you never know what can happen. When I was 24, I had the chance to play for Benin, and I knew France was quite far away. I didn't have the chance to play for France. I was in championship, so there is no chance you, you play for France. Of course. And, um, you know, I didn't have any strong links with uh, Benin because my parents never traveled over there. We've never been there. It's, the generation is a bit far, you know. Okay. So I went there and I spoke with the sports minister. I spoke with the president of the federation and everything. And just I, I said, why not, you know? Um, and I went there. And I, since I know I don't regret it, I enjoy met some people, fell in love with the country, uh, the mentality and everything. It's been challenging, obviously, because, you know, you have to adapt and realize that when you travel there, you cannot compare to what's going on do you, in Europe. Do you, do you also get a language barrier? or No, as they speak French over French. there. French, okay, yeah. got you. Okay. They've got other languages, but they speak French as the main one, so right. it's fine. Okay. And since, you know, I play with did them... They, did, they, they, did, they, did they offer you the nationality as well? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, fine, mm. great. Yeah. No, it's good. And then, then um, you know, I don't regret my choice, you know. No, I mean, you're playing now, so it's good. So coming yeah, back yeah. to England, let's talk about the Premiership and, 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 and the, okay. uh, you know, so you joined Cardiff City. At, at Cardiff City, I mean, were you at that point when Cardiff City was in the Premiership or were they playing? No, uh, I was when um, Malky Makai came, so it was uh, 2011. Okay. So we did, we did two seasons in Championship, then we went up. Yep. And then that's how you, so you played in the Premiership. So well. I, I went to the Prem with Cardiff, but then I play only like games and the manager. So before I got sacked, we had the chat. Okay. And uh, he said, it's better for you if you go on loan, because at this time you could go on loan in the season from champ to champ. Yep. So I went on loan to Blackburn to have uh, well, I just had, uh, we I just read some comments here that, oh, please come back to uh uh, rovers, you know, so I was thinking <laughs> you're in Middlesbrough right now. When did Blackburn happen? How was it at Blackburn? That's that's my seriously uh, regarding football, was that was my best time because I was playing every game. The manager had the big trust, you know. Um, it was my best time with the beginning of uh, Aston Villa. Did you did you have that Alan Share pressure at Blackburn? No, not at all, not at all. No, the, the thing is because they went down for quite a while when I joined them, yeah. you know, the, this like light about like premiership was a bit over. So um, I went there, good feeling with the team, with the manager, played every game. Even if it was, was doing average game, the manager was there. So I felt good, you know, scored Absolutely. goals. 
do you think do you think do you think as uh, for a footballer is it the team is it the manager is it the club is it the fans that play an important part in the footballer's life or is it a mix of all of those i think it's a mix of all of those first of all you have the manager if the manager doesn't want you in the club but you 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 came with a the sporting director or something like this then it's going to be a conflict of interest and you're in a difficult position so if the manager wants you and then if you're doing well the team will accept you there's no problem about it you know if of you're a guy and you, you have to adapt then if you're doing well the fans like you but if the other way around the manager doesn't play you a lot you came on sometimes and it's not happen very well so the fans that start to be on your back and there there's like this negativity around you so it's yeah it has to have all the ingredients to perform in one club you know but as a footballer you mentioned about the manager playing an important part because mm-hmm. is it the case that the footballer plays well if the manager wants him to play well or if it's not the manager then how does the club or the sporting director you mentioned how do they play a part when the manager doesn't want you there how does it work you know it's a uh, there is always finance involved of always. course uh, in the, football money 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 talks right exactly always the case so sometimes you know there is some agreements uh, which are made without the approbation of the manager but the deal is made with the sporting director you know there is some clubs where the manager does have a lot to say about the recruitment the sporting director deal with yeah. it and the manager has to deal with the, the player he's got so okay. he didn't pick the player then you've got some team where the manager chooses everything so he's got the power to choose his player i think i prefer to go this kind of team because you know if the manager wants you he will play you and make sure you perform but do you so think these think... days these days that we are seeing right now do you think the managers have enough power or Depends. is it like a sort of a, i mean uh, personally i don't see anyone having power apart from jose mourinho i mean i don't see the lower leagues but the fact is back in the days you had alex ferguson you had arsen wenger mm-hmm. you had you know all these big managers who whose decision sort of impacted the club if they want the player the player has to be there you know mm-hmm. so do you think that the times have changed now that manager has no say into what they what player they want or even though they see the player playing well in other teams but mm-hmm. it's possibly the finance of the club or yeah i think i think it, it, it changed a bit you know recently uh, before as you said there's like manager so the manager was managing the club everything about the sports was managed by the the gaffer we call it the gaffer of so course Mourinho, yeah, the gaffer. Like yeah yeah now there is a new like role who came out this is a bit like sporting director before in england it wasn't it wasn't there a lot it was the manager dealing with everything yeah he was he was already then from they used to have sporting director and a coach and but the relation between coach and sporting director has to be tight because if okay. they don't get on with each other it's going to be difficult then i think it's like the manager giving some names and the sporting director giving some names and then there's this financial situation where what's possible what is not possible and who wants who and so i would say like big clubs like mourinho uh, they choose they choose one, to who, yeah, who they, they want the on their team yeah Absolutely. they give some names maybe they don't get everyone because there is a financial part but they they get what they want you know it's funny That's we're talking about mourinho i mean i don't i don't know if you watched uh, his amazon prime uh, tottenham no. series that they it was pretty good to know the inside of mourinho for the first time i mean i've never okay. met him or anything but the fact the way he deals with things the way he deals with his players the club and everything it was good to know about that and mm-hmm. actually i'm i'm actually taking mourinho's name for the first time on this live so it's good no nah, okay i started supporting chelsea when he came to chelsea nah, okay. because i'd seen what he done at what he did at porto and everything and yeah that. yeah i think he's got a reputation like time the media gave him a reputation but i quite like him as he, he looks good as a person i think with the players do you think you would ever play with him play for him no 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 i don't think so i don't think so 
Uh, exactly. You have to, you have to know where you're going, and <laughs> I know where I'm going in my next club, so it's over for me. I wish I had him as a coach. If I had few manager to pick, I would choose him, or I would choose a uh, club. You know, yes, not those two. Yes, Jurgen you know, Klopp. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what he's doing with Liverpool right now, what he's done over the past few years, absolutely amazing. Yeah, but amazing. even like if you put the wins, obviously wins is every, is everything, but. When you see how the players react when they score, when they win the game with the manager, that shows you how tight they are with the team, you know, in the Absolutely. manager. I think. So, yeah, so it's a mix of ingredients to come back with the, the discussion. And, yep. um, and obviously, uh, like, a player has to, to feel, like, free on the pitch to perform, you know. Of if course. he knows at any mistake he's out of the team, he won't be 100%. I That's... didn't ask you about the position you play in. And has that position been the same since the day you started at the age of 10? Or has it yes. changed around? No, I've always been a striker. Always. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, career goals so far? I don't know. Not a lot. You know. The problem is I had, a, I, I don't know, 200-something games. But most of them I was a substitute. Okay. So, you know, sometimes it's in one game because you came on for 10 minutes. But it's hard to score. If yeah. you check my number of a starting game and goals, I think my rate is not bad. So you're you're yeah. up there. Not up there because I didn't score a lot, but yeah. if, when I play, I score. So in England, you've been with Cardiff, you've been at Blackburn, you've mm. been at Aston Villa, mm. you've been at Middlesbrough. Out of these four, was there a fifth club that I'm not mentioning, or are these the four clubs? No, that no, no. At? That's the four. That's the four. Yeah. Which has been your best experience? I, I'd, you can maybe divide that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I had my on. first experience coming in England in Cardiff, so for me it was a big change. But my dream was to come to play in England when I was young. So I came there. Uh, my English wasn't very good, um, so I had to learn quite fast because if you want to be uh, accepted by the team you have to you be have able to, to communicate yep. yeah Absolutely. you have to communicate do you take any lessons or just youtube yeah no i started no this time youtube wasn't that big uh, <laughs> I, I i'm 32 years old so you know you have to take some years back uh no i, I had some lessons um but then like I, I was lucky because i was the first i was the only french in the team oh, okay so yeah, i had to speak english okay i had okay. to but the players must have been like, come on, speak French with us. No, no, not, not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot because uh, they knew like the few bit, bonjour, comment ça va, etc. Okay, okay. Uh, but I had a good squad, seriously, the good team players and uh, they are, it was a good time. Um, then I went to Blackburn where I was like performing well, scoring goals and that's why they give me the boost for my career. So I enjoyed my time. I really enjoyed my time there. Then at Villa, it started very well uh, with uh, Tim Sherwood. I think I connected with you when you were playing with the, with Aston Villa on LinkedIn. I think maybe. that's the time. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, now memories are coming back. So I'm like, yeah, that's the time I connected with you on LinkedIn when you, I think, and you even scored one day and I sent you a congratulations uh, on, your, yeah, on your LinkedIn. But uh, yeah. So I had, my, I had a good time with Tim Sherwood because he wanted me to come in the team. Yep. I played, yep. he played me, I scored goals. And then I've been, uh, then he's been sacked. And since he's been sacked with Remy Gard, it was uh, not the most enjoyable time in my football career. Okay. Then I had the chance to go to, uh, to Middlesbrough with uh, Eto'o Karanka. Yep. Back to, back to the Premier League. Yep. Um, he got sacked after a month or something like this. I've been unlucky with Mon had, I think like 14 manager in, in four years or something like this. I think Mourinho is going to call you soon. <laughs> no, no. We, we can talk. I would be happy to talk to him, but I don't think he's going to call me to sign for him. Jose Mourinho, if you're listening. Rudy's if you're listening, I will be open to chat with him, but that's it. Absolutely. Um, so, which was the longest period uh, from these English clubs that you played for? Uh, which club did you play, play for the longest? It's funny because I played the longest for Middlesbrough. Okay. But that, that's where I had the, my worst time in uh, English football. Wow. To be honest, to be honest with you, yeah. Was it the team? Was it the manager? Was it the club? Mm. Was it the fans? No, when I first came, uh, it was good with the manager, Karanka. Then uh, they changed, got sacked. Then 
the, the atmosphere in the club. The, the manager always been okay, good. You know, even last season I had Jonathan Woodgate, which was good. You know, with Robbie Keane, I enjoyed my time with there. Tony Pulis, nightmare. Um, no, if you can listen, I'm a, I'm a piece. <laughs> He's a nightmare. He's not honest at all. He's lying. He's, I remember. He, I remember Tony Pulis from the time when he was at. Was he at Stoke? Yeah, maybe Stoke West Brom Palace. West. I, 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 I think the first time I saw him was at Stoke when they they got uh, uh, promoted to the Premiership. I think so. I don't remember. Yeah, maybe he's got his way. He's got his way. He's got his way to see football, but it's not my way. And oh. as a person, he's not all something I will. Uh, I will spend time with him, or I will not go on a day with him. So uh, I don't want to get into politics. Yeah, no, much, yeah, no know? problem. Yeah. But you mentioned about your clubs. You mentioned about your career. You mentioned about your profession. How you got into football. What were the hardships that you dealt with with injury? Mm. Obviously, spending time at school, balancing all of that together, not getting into parties and friends and all that kind of stuff. Just focusing on yourself. Um, Quick three questions, if I. Uh, this is just coming up to me right now. No problem. So, um, pick one team that you would play. Uh, let's take it this way. Pick one team that you would dream play for. Madrid. Good choice. Real good choice. One manager that you would play for. I think we know the answer, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's three. Z okay, name all three. Zidane, Mourinho, Klopp. Guys listening, do call him up. Um, and I don't want to ask the player that you would play along, but let's name uh, another 10 players that you would play along. I would like they to could, play along. They could be retired. They could be playing right now, whatever it is. Okay. You've got 10, so go on. I'll count them. So it's like I do my my team, my dream team. Yeah, dream team, okay. including yourself. So you're there. You're number. Yeah, of 11. course. I'm on yeah. top. I'm on top. You're on top. Number nine. Number nine. Yeah. So yeah. I'll so I would that. play with. Oof. Can I put friends? Or I have to be a friends. Um, you could put your uh, people, uh, players who've retired, players who are playing right now, yeah, whoever yeah. it is. Okay. So. And pick a manager as well. As a manager. I will put. Uh, I will put uh, Mourinho. Mourinho as a manager. Go on. Good. Good choice. Goals. I will goal. put in the goal as a keeper. I will put uh, Van der Sar. Amazing choice. Okay, you've got nine. Yeah, I was the search of Van der Sar. I was thinking, but Van der Sar. Left back, Marcus Olsen. Good choice. Left centre back, Guy Tambong. I've not heard of him. Yeah, uh, heard of him. Uh, centre back, I will put um, Kalidou. That I had another call. Centre back, Kalidou Koulibaly. Okay, I haven't heard of him either. Koulibaly from Napoli. Uh, possibly. I don't follow Italian football, so I don't know. No, but City, Man United, they wanted to sign him for 60 million this summer. Is it? Well, yeah. Uh, I'm, okay. too out of, I'm too out yeah. of football. <laughs> right back. Well, I'm going to put right back. One I like. Daniel Alves. Good choice. Okay. Uh, I, I will put like four, four, three, three. Four, three, three. Okay, so you've got four. And yeah, three, and three. three. Yeah, I would put Pjanic. Okay, Besic. Okay, and on the right, I would put. Very difficult. Let's get the audience involved, and maybe they want to. Maybe they want to uh, put your team. So, guys, if you have any player, we've got three players left. Maybe put your choice in there. No, nah, there's only one because I know the other two. Okay. Okay, so you've so, got one choice, guys. Come on. Yeah. So you name the other a... two and then let's wait for the other people to okay. join. Okay, then I will, I will have breast rate on the okay. left. Okay. And on the right, I will have... Uh... You've, got a, you've got a name suggestion, Kevin, Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, midfielder Kevin De Bruyne. You've got Neil and... Warnock. 
And no. <laughs> so Bracewell just said on the right, I will put uh, someone is going to be uh, David Beckham. So I know I'm going to score goals in my head. So you've got 10 there. And, mm-hmm. and and obviously you. So yeah, I put some friends on because if I put in the dream team, like you've got the Zidane, you've got Ronaldo and everything. Of course, of course, of yeah. course. Would you, would you, would you, would you uh, play alongside Ronaldo? Which one? Cristiano. Of course, yeah, yeah. It's. It, it, I think it will not as much as goal as if you've got like real midfielder because he won't. He's gonna score the goals. If you can Someone suggested the... Messi. Would you have Messi in your team? Maybe as a substitute. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> I think it will be sub. Yeah. <laughs> Good to know that. Good to know that. So it's wow. I mean, I've never done this. This just came up to my mind right yeah, now because okay. you're you're here. So absolutely amazing to. Have that information about your dream team. I may choose that maybe, you know, I don't know, when I become a manager, um, if I do. So thank you so much for coming on this live. Uh, normally, I do them for half an hour, but it's been so amazing talking to no you. No problem. That I, I didn't even see the time uh, that, that, you know, that passed through. But before you go, Rudy, um, I do this with all my guests that come on here. We've seen a lot of negativity, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. In yeah. the last year, everyone calls it the one-year anniversary of the coronavirus, all that kind yeah. of stuff, you know. Um, and even before then, I mean, because, because you were in the UK, you would know how things were since the mm-hmm. point of Brexit in 2016 to now. There's never been, you have that positivity, but then negativity draws upon it and, and everything's lost. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of young players out there who need that motivation in life that, you know, they should have that vision like you did. You know, you went through school, you went through injuries, you went through everything in your life to 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 get to where you wanted to. You know, and yeah. you're still you're still going ahead. You've just signed up for an unknown for club, which we don't yeah. know about. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'll soon know about that on your Instagram, on your yeah. LinkedIn. So I'll wait for that news. What positive message would you like to share with the world, with the young footballers, with the young, you know? The guys that grow up and think, no, I want to be a footballer. What positive message would you like to share with the world today so that they can take that on board and move forward in life? Yeah. So first thing I would say is like switch off um, social media and news on TV for a few days. Then you will realize that the world is not that bad. Once you did it, focus on yourself. What you like, what you don't like, what you want to do, what you, where you want to go. Just write it down like a vision board. Then commit yourself that you want, you're going to get there. Because stay focused on what you can control. Of course. Coronavirus, you cannot control. Of course. Uh, the, the Brexit, you cannot control. Politics is politics. So if you start to be like, um, to, to listen to the, the, the negative noise around you, you will stay where you are now. So, but, but it's not just about the news, right? You speak to anyone. You could speak to your friend. You could speak to your family member. You could speak to someone on the street and... Yeah, All you'll be talking about is negative. What you know? do they do? What do they do every day? Those persons, they're on social media, they listen to news and everything. Just surround yourself by positive people, people who want to get the same way than you, or have the same path than you. It could be sports, in, uh, finance, uh, properties, and everything. But someone who are ready to to do what you need to be done to get there. You've got too many people around you. You don't need in your life. Absolutely. Just like, Absolutely. Bad words and bad words and negativity <laughs> and everything. So just surround yourself with good people. Be focused on yourself and where you want to go. Stay true to yourself. Don't try to do something you don't for the others. Don't want to. Tr- yeah. Yeah. Be true to yourself, and then you will see that life is good. Life is amazing. You know, you've got. It's just people around you giving you like negativity. Obviously, you will you will get challenge. You will get adversity. You have to push yourself and everything. But if you don't listen to the noise around you, you will see that it's much easier to get to get there. Absolutely. But thank you so much for coming on here. Anytime. Sharing that whole sort of knowledge packed live session with us today. <laughs> it's been absolutely amazing to have you on. My pleasure. When are you back in the UK and going to start? I'm playing? not back in the UK. Oh, you're not. So it's no, uh, oh, back. okay. So at yeah. least we know that that is an international club. Yeah. It could be EU. Exactly. It could be anywhere. I'm but... not back in the UK. Good luck with your career, whatever you, you are, much. however you want to be and where you want to go. I wish you all the best. 
and without injuries please don't yeah, injure yeah. yourself anymore you know uh, yeah. Yeah. your body's only one so look after it while you're in no training problem. playing football uh but it's question last question how Fun. has it been playing without fans but that's why you realize that fans is play a big part in the game because it's is different you miss this 10% you know extra or something going to push you that adrenaline and that 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 beat yeah, you up kind of thing this atmosphere exactly going to like drive you a bit more or give you a edge you know absolutely because wrong or bad fans they give you a boost you know what i mean so absolutely yeah you miss it it's but you wrong, can see when you want wrong to, fans you can you see prove when... to them that you're not and right yeah fans, you exactly prove to them that yeah yeah exactly. your shouting was worth it yeah exactly <laughs> so it's it's just that you can see when you watch game that something is missing you know we see that on the on the on the telly you know i mean that, that's why that's why i don't watch <laughs> you stop watching football <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> But Rudy has been absolutely amazing chatting to you. My pleasure. What an amazing gentleman you are. It was Thank so you. fabulous to have you on. All the very best in your career and in Thank life you. with family, friends. Stay prosperous. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take care. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Wow, what an amazing I mean one of the best live sessions i've had absolutely amazing thank you so much to rudy jasit for joining me on here sharing his knowledge in terms of how to build a professional football player's career do check it out once this is live on my instagram it was super and especially when he spoke about his dream team the players the manager you know absolutely amazing Thank you so much to Rudy for joining me today. Thank you to all the viewers that tuned in. It's been a pleasure to have you on. Do tune in again to my live session which will be highlighted on my live story. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day. Take care. Bye-bye.